the children in the world and successful lecture so high years with West Side Stories and Rebel Without a Cross. Ruth was married to the actor Robert Lutton at the time of her death. The two had long-term tempestuous relationship having divorced in 1957 and were married in 1972. On the morning of November 28, 1981, it Wood's body was found floating in a Pabrina Island cove. The night before, Wood had been on a nearby yacht with her husband, Robert Lutner, and their friend actor Christopher Walter. In the aftermath of the death, authorities concluded that Wood had gone at night to take a dinghy to the dock and simply slip into the water. However, Wood and Wagner are seen fighting at night, she disappeared. Possibly about her closeness with Walker, Wood also had a lifelong fear of water, making the idea of her taking a small boat alone, as Wagner contended, difficult to believe. The boat's captain, Danny Stefner, wrote in a 2010 boat that he believed Wagner was responsible for Wood's death. And the Wagner didn't search diligently for Wood when she went missing. For 30 years, Wood was classified as a victim of accidental drowning. However, Wood's case was reopened by the LAPD in November 2011. Devon now says he lied to investigators during the original investigation. Police have currently said that neither Walter nor Wagner is a suspect. In their new investigation. We in a pretty, somewhat successful 1980 stunt to attend a Labor Day weekend party celebrating Lost in Fabric about a signing a million dollar contract with Karama. At a wedding party, Rocky became in a Buckles hotel room. A Buckle found her when she and he went to change clothes. And he and other girls were seen approaching Rabe. A doctor saw Rabe and said that she was drunk. Rabe continued to be ill at the hotel but did not make it to a hospital until three days later when he was too late for treatment. She died of peritonitis from a ruptured bladder. Bambina Mode. Dalmont, another party attendee, led the church. There's a dean's about saying Rabbi had invited to her that Rostow hurt me. Tablet slipped into the story, and one of the theory holding that Abato with Rabbi and his weight over 300 pounds caused injuries that led to her death. Another story was that Abato with Rabbi with her foreign object, consulting in a fatal internal injuries for Rabbi. Abaco was arrested and tried for Rabbi's death. His first two trials were manslaughter and death in court juries. But he was acquitted in his retrial and received an apology from the jury due to the complete lack of evidence against him. Rabbi may not have even been a victim of murder. Instead, she may have received an illegal abortion, which could have caused her peritonitis to kill her. Though a doctor was acquitted, she had found guilty in court of public opinion and couldn't find work for years. She appeared in some comedy shows. In 1933, this combat ended when he died in his sleep of a heart attack soon after. Sean was a 22 year old who worked as a waitress while hoping to make it in Hollywood. She disappeared in January 9, 1947. Passerby discovered Sean's mutilated body in a residential section of LA. January 14, 1947. Short Scott was cut in half and her face had deep dashes. Marks on her wrist indicated she had been tied up and possibly tortured. 
lack of blood at a scene when she had been killed elsewhere and dumped in the vacant lot where she was discovered. The attractive victim and gruesome mother garnered a lot of press attention. The press started calling short the black body, possibly a reference to short start time in recent release of a film called The Blue Dolly. The police had a huge suspect pool that included all the men shot her people and medic- medical students at LA area colleges who had the surgical knowledge needed to settle shot's body. One year later, theory is that one little theory is that Dr. Walter Bailey, who lived near the lot that where the body was found and whose daughter was a friend of Short's family, was the killer. He died suffering from the brain disease that may have made him more violent and it was rumored he'd been blackmailed by a former mistress about some misdeed. At the time, the killer followed the case of the, in the papers, even going so far as to mail the contents of Short's purse to an LA paper. The case was stayed in popular culture through the years, most notably with James Elroy's novel, The Black Dollar, but no one has ever been arrested, arrested for the crime. Even the large suspect, suspect pool and the time that has passed, the murder may never be solved. Monroe Bon Jean Mortensen was a famous actress known for her roles in movies such as Some Like Hip Hop and for her relationship with powerful men of the day, from Arthur Miller to Joe DiMaggio to J.R. King. On orders for 1962, the 36-year-old Monroe died in her French group home. A housekeeper and psychiatrist is target one room may get in the bed with an empty bottle or sleeping pills nearby. Before her death, Monroe had been hospitalized for psychiatric problems and was receiving long-term psychiatric care. Her death was ruled a probable suicide, but many believe Monroe was murdered. Was me to make sure she wouldn't talk about her life with both J.R.K. and his brother Robert. Although Monroe's affair with J.R.K. had been talked about in Hollywood for some time, a birthday ceremony of the president in April 1962 made more people aware of the connection. Murder rumors had been speculation continue. There is no definitive answer now about Monroe's death then in 1960s. Reese was an actor best known for playing Superman in a 1950s TV show. Reese died of a gunshot wound to the head in, on June 16, 1959. He was in the Benedict Canyon home at the time as he as well his fiancée, Leonore Lemon and three other guests. Although ruled a suicide, the fact that others in the house waited to call the police and that stray bullet cases were found by the body like some believe priest was victim of homicide, not suicide. He had been, a, he had been a, having a affair with Tony Norman, the wife of MTM executive. One theory holds that Jupiter Tony had killed had Ruth's kid. Another that the purported t- husband, Adin Mannix, uses underworld ties to have Ruth's kid. In 1999, a Hollywood publicist at Work Mosey claimed Tony Mannix confessed to killing Ruth. However, no proofs were offered or found, so the case remained an, an official suicide. Scott had a successful film actresses who worked during the 1920s and 1930s. She appeared in Marx Brothers' hit show as Horse Riders and Monkey Business. 
Todd had opened a restaurant called Delma Todd Sidewalk Cafe and lived in an apartment above. On December 16, 1935, she was found inside a car which was parked near her restaurant. It was determined that she had died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Although first considered a case of accidental poisoning, the death was ruled a suicide. Todd had been experiencing financial difficulties, but blood spot found in the car and on Todd's face led some belief she had been killed. She had just divorced someone from whom she accused of spousal abuse, and some speculated that bad feelings from split black ex-husband, ex-husband had the secret to kill her. Todd's body was cremated, so no thorough autopsy was ever carried out. The case remains an official suicide with no new evidence to support the theory of murder. Taylor was a successful silent film director who debuted The Awakening in 1914 and worked in Hollywood until his 1922 murder. Taylor's corpse was found in his bungalow on the morning of February 2nd, 1922. He had been shot in the back. He had last seen, last been seen by his friend Mabel Norman the night before. After she left him at approximately 7.45 p.m., anyone could have entered his house and shot him. After Taylor's body was found, a crowd gathered in the house before the police arrived, making evidence collection nearly impossible. His former and current bill ballots were initially suspected, but the fact that Taylor still had his diamond ring and cash in, the wallet, in his wallet made people discount that the idea of robbery. Taylor had been helping his friend Norman with her cocaine addiction and working with law enforcement to touch a drug dealer, which may have made the criminals target him. The actress Mary Miles Winter had an unrecruited crush on Taylor, which made her and her mother suspects as well. An actress named Margaret Gibson confessed to the murder in 1964, but no corroboration evidence was ever found. Taylor's mother remains unsolved, and at a late date, it is likely, unlikely that the killer will ever be found. Jason was a well-known Hollywood publicist. At 64, she had a long career in Hollywood and was known for helping the film she publicized win Oscars. Jason was returning home from the world premiere of Brewster on November 16, 2010, when she was shot multiple times in her car in Beverly Hills. She died at the scene of the shooting. Police believe Jason was shot in a robbery attempt that went wrong. When Jason's purse was left at the scene, the main suspect, Harold Martin Smith, killed himself in 2010 when police tried to search his apartment building, leaving many unanswered questions. Smith had bragged that he had been paid $10,000 to kill Jason, but some believe the murder was a professional drive-by shooting that Smith had little to deal with, as his only means getting around alley with a bicycle. Smith used the same gun to kill himself that Jason had been shot with, and left no clue as to who, if anyone, may have hired him. Crane born in 1928 was an actor known for starring in the popular TV series Holden Serials from 1965 to 1971. Crane was a successful actor, but his personal life included womanizing and a predilection of sexual indiscretion. He had started recording and photographing his sexual encounters with help from his friend John Carpenter, a salesman who provided Crane with recording equipment. Crane was found murdered 
on June 29, 1978, he had been beaten to death while sleeping in a Strutsdale, Arizona hotel room. The killer wrapped an electrical, electric cord around Crane's neck after he was dead. Theories for Crane's death included a jealous spouse or boyfriend attacking Crane, which put the suspect list in the hundreds, or someone seeking revenge for being recorded without his or her consent. Carpenter was another suspect. Besides providing Crane with recording devices, he had also participated in at least one three-way with the actor. People had observed tension between the friend right before the murder. No concrete evidence linked Carpenter to the crime until 1992, when the police found that an expert to testify that a photograph spot on Carpenter's rental car was actually brain matter. Carpenter was tried for the crime, but his defense stated that there were no way to be sure what the photograph showed. Carpenter was eventually acquitted and maintained he was innocent until his 1998 death. Ivers was a talented musician who wrote the song In Heaven, the Lady in a Radiator Song for David Lynch's Eraser Head. He also hosted New Wave Theatre in a variety show which featured punk and new wave acts. He was good friends with Lynch, Harold Ramis, the Pixie, John Lifgrow and many other stars. Ivers was bludgeoned to death in his apartment in 1983. A large group of friends gathered in his apartment soon after his death and may have unintentionally destroyed the evidence by doing so. Although some of Ivers' friends believe that some who knew the Ivers from New Wave Theatre may have been the killer, there were no evidence tying anyone to the crime. I was knew a large group of people which gave the police a large pool of potential suspects. Not clearly, it could have been simply been a robbery gone wrong. So either case remains unsolved and officially it still under investigation. Helm was a prodigal who wanted to be an actress. She enjoyed meeting and hooking up with Hollywood stars and players as she waited for her big break. Helm was beaten and stabbed to death on February 12, 1977. The crime happened outside her agent's West Hollywood home. Helm allegedly kept a sex diary and recordings of her meetings with powerful people in Hollywood. Someone may have killed her to keep these materials and their concerned content secret. The police never found Helm's diary with the number of lovers, both male and female, that Helm had. Jealousy was another possible motive. Or Helm could have simply been a victim of a random crime. The police interviewed Helm's friend and acquaintance, but was no physical evidence and no sign of missing diary. They never had promising leads. Christopher Wallace, along with Tupac Shakur, was among the biggest hip-hop star of his days. Wallace, aka Billy Smalls, or the Notorious Big, was from the East Coast and worked with Bad Boy Entertainment. Shakur was from the West and signed to Death Row, Death Row Records. Both men were climbing the charts and experiencing growing success in 1990s. Shaker was shot and killed in Vegas in September 1996 while in a car with Shoot Knight, the head of Death Row Records. Wallace was killed in a similar drive-by shooting in Los Angeles in March 1997. One of Bad Boy Entertainment star, which included Wallace and Sean Combs, 
may have arranged a shakur and knight to be shot. Knight survived his wounds, Wallace's death could, be, could have been a revenge chilling for shakur and knight shooting. Wallace's mother, Voletta Wallace, believed that LAPD was behind his murder and brought lawsuit against the department in 2002. Voletta Wallace's lawsuit was dismissed, although the rivalry and enmity between the two stars so real, no physical evidence links the two murders. The case are still officially under investigation. Stompanato was involved with the actress Lana Turner in a relationship that had a history of violence. He was also a gangster who, who worked as an enforcer for Mickey Cohen. Stompanato died of a knife wound on April 1958 at Lana Turner's home. Turner's daughter, Cheryl Crane, who was 14 years old at the time, confessed to the crime. Crane stated she had picked up a knife to protect her mother during an argument with Stompanato. As there was, were no fingerprints on the knife, many people believed Turner had stabbed Stompanato either during a violent confrontation or because she wanted to end the relationship. Crane may have the blame for the crime to protect her mother and because she faced a much lighter penalty as a minor. Crane confessed to the crime and no evidence appeared that disputed her version of events. So the case went to trial. Crane was found to have committed justifiable homicide to protect herself and her mother.